Today I am living. And since I'm living now, this life is of Christ's, it's not mine anymore. For me to say whether I do this or that, it is the Lord who determines what you need to do since he gave you his life. Family, and I'll leave you with this. The church's family don't ever lose track of that. What is the role of a family? Supporting one another. Being there for one another. Holding on to one another. Grabbing each other's hands. Comforting one another. Not going against each other. The world will never ever promote family. Just look around you. Have you ever seen on any social media platforms, on any mainstream medias, any te television networks, have you ever seen any programs promoting family values? Zilch, zero. It is all about individualism. This is the Satan in its making. The language of Satan, it is all about you, 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 you. You're 16, you can do whatever you want. Don't ever listen to mom and dad. They probably came from the Middle East, old fashioned. Who cares about them? This is Australia. This is America. This is Europe. This is Canada. You are free. Do as you please. Satanic, satanic, satanic evil. But the Lord... His main focus is family. Family is so precious to God. He revealed himself as the family. He said, I am the father, I am the son, and I am the Holy Spirit. When a man gets married, when the man has a child, then that man becomes a father. God says, I am the father, the son, and the Holy Spirit. I am family. The number one thing is to me, is family. The moment we live for ourselves, we are selfish. And the moment we live selfishly, Satan has devoured us. Believe you me. How many young men and women that tried to live their way and allowed nobody to interfere with their way of living, where did they end up? In a lot of trouble. 100%. But when we come to this family unit and we respect and honor our membership in this family unit, God is in the midst of us. And when God is in the midst of us, no one can break us nor shake us. No one. But when parents come and speak to their children and children turn around and say, none of your business, mom, none of your business, dad, I don't care. I'll do it my way. Guess what? The family is destroyed and the children are lost. Lost. So it's got nothing to do with living in the West or in the east, or in the south, nor in the north. It has got to do with living with Christ. Are you with Christ? Regardless where you are, and regardless who you are, what race, color, and background you are, Christ is the never-changing God. You need Him in your life, always, not when you choose to. Because He is the source of life. And without Him, there is no life. So it's not a matter of choice. It's a matter of discernment an acknowledgement of this truth. Christ is life, you better live him. And outside of him, there is nothing but absolute death, destruction, and hell. So beautiful when we come as one family. Look in here, there are Catholics, there are Orthodox, so many different colors. There is white, there is black, there is yellow, and there is good looking. <laughs> I had to rub it in, hey. But you know what? But that's beautiful. Why do we differentiate? Why do I say I'm better than you? 
Why do I say I am stronger than you? Why do I say I'm smarter than you? Why do I say I'm higher than you? There is no one stronger, better, beautiful, perfect, complete, except Jesus Christ. All of us, we need to come and bow before his holy feet. All of us. But in him, we are one perfect family. Beautiful. Michelangelo, one of the greatest artists ever to exist. If you were only to give him one kind of a color, no matter how genius he is, he can never give you a beautiful portrait. But when you give him all the colors, and when he mixes all the colors, you see a magnificent portrait being painted. It is all the different colors when they are put together. The picture is beautiful. One color, selfish, egocentric, ugly. All colors together, united, beauty, life. Amazing. Love the Lord. And ask the Lord who promised you that he will send you the Holy Spirit. The comforter. To comfort you. To fill you up, to enlighten you, to brighten you. For in him we live. This is the Holy Spirit. For in him we live, we move, and we exist. Before I was dead, and today I am living. And since I'm living now, this life is of Christ's. It's not mine anymore. For me to say whether I do this or that. It is the Lord who determines what you need to do since he gave you his life. You belong to Christ, not to yourself. What did the father say to that prodigal son? Luke 15. My son was dead and now he is living. My son was lost and now he's found. A dead person cannot say nor do nor he's dead. He can't do anything. It takes God to raise the dead. So God gave me his life on the cross through his, through his love and the power of the Holy Spirit I received that life. That life is of Christ the King. Now I'm living Christ, no longer me. I was dead. Christ gave me his life. That's why I'm alive. So now it is Christ's life I need to live for him, no one else. And since I'm living for him, in him we move. I walk the Lord's way, not anyone else's way. So when my so-called friend calls me and says, let's go clubbing, that's not the Lord's way. When my friend says, let's take some white powder, little bags, that is not my way. That's not the Lord's way. When he says, let's go and gamble, that's not the Lord's way. When he says, let's go and drink, that's not the Lord's way. When he says, let's go and kill, that is not the Lord's way. The Lord's way is light, life, liberty, and glory. Look at the world. Absolute evilness, absolute destruction. But look at Christ's life. Honor, glory, respect. If we live in Christ, and if we move in his way, we will exist in him in the next life forever. In him we live, we move, and exist. Live and move on earth, exist in heaven forever. Let's bow our heads. Let's ask the Lord on this holy Pentecost day, say, Lord, in your Holy Spirit's name, O Holy Spirit, come and engulf me. Touch my heart and make me realize my sins. Let me see my errors and allow me to mourn over my sins. I want to cry for every moment I broke Jesus Christ's heart. I mourn over every sin 
I have done against you, my Lord Jesus. I mourn over every wrong decision that has hurt you, my Lord. I cry over every mistake I have made deliberately, not deliberately, intentionally, unintentionally. Today, I bow before you. O oh, Holy Spirit, teach me on how to repent. Show me the way back to the Lord Jesus, for there is no other way but him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Our good God and full of mercy, our good God and full of mercy, whose grace and mercy is poured upon all. Pour, my Lord, the compassion of the delightfulness of your love upon your servants, and again transform them in the hope of renewal to the life of repentance. Renew in them your Holy Spirit, by whom they are sealed for the day of salvation. Purify them by your compassion from all flesh and spiritual blemishes, and assure the hope of their faith by the aid of your grace, and instill the walks of their behavior in the paths of righteousness. Please them along with the saints in your kingdom by the assurance of the hope of their faith and the adoption as your children and in the joy of your absolving mysteries. Empower them by the aid of your mercies to observe your commandments and fulfill your will, to confess, worship, and praise your holy name, the Lord of all, Father and Son, and Holy Spirit forever. Amen. May the Lord Jesus forgive us all and guide us and deliver us from the snares of the enemy. Fill us with his Holy Spirit by the love of God the Father and by the sacrifice which he offered on Calvary for the salvation and the redemption of the entire world. Amen. Tomorrow we are having the um, fasting of the apostles of Christ. We fasted 40 or 50 days, which is the Lord's fasting, and then it was Sunday resurrection, and now we're going for another 50 days of fasting. And this time it is the disciples of the Lord fasting, starting tomorrow for 50 days. Congratulations. So you better be um, fasting from tomorrow. Now, let me tell you one thing. Um, <clears throat> fasting in the church is basically we go vegan. Yeah. Some of us may not be able to go vegan, but try your absolute best to whatever you can. It's good to taste fasting and and uh, maybe it's a kindergarten level where somebody will come and say uh, father i love chocolate if i give up on chocolate for a week is that okay that's not bad but uh, that's kindergarten level so what we need to do is we need to uh, educate ourselves and graduate from the kindergarten level and go to year one and then hopefully year six and then year 12 and hopefully uh, Notre Dame University. We graduate from Notre Dame and uh, we become uh, uni graduates. We need to also learn how to give up on everything. So maybe one day, try it. But don't push yourself and then something happened, God forbid, and you say, the bishop broke me. Um, maybe one day, when, one morning you wake up, don't eat, don't drink, nothing till lunchtime. See how you go. If you are okay, try it another day. If you are okay, try another day and see how you go. But consult your spiritual father along the way. Don't run for it yourself. No. Consult with your spiritual father, say, look, I've been doing this fasting till lunchtime for the last week. I feel good. Uh, what do you recommend, father? Shall I continue that another week? Why not? Be a man, even if you're a woman, but that's not G LGBT. Okay. Um, um, the Lord wants, wants people that are strong, not weak. Weak when I face the world on my own, but strong in the Lord. So he wants you to be strong, not weak. So maybe try for about a, a week, see how you go, and then come back. It's good, you know, to, to do fasting all the time, every now and then. It's good. It's good. It's not only when there are special occasions in the church calendar, but it's also good to do it even outside of the church calendar. 
It's healthy. It reminds you a lot of things that probably we have taken for granted. You know, the first thing it will remind me when I go starving, so many people are starving in the world. Have I thought about them before? Maybe not so much until I starved. You see, I never appreciate the thing until I lose that thing. I never appreciate it until I experience it. So when I went hungry, when I slept hungry, I realized how difficult it is for so many people that sleep every night hungry. My heart goes out to them. I feel their pain. I feel their loneliness. Oh, we need to feel people are lonely. Very difficult when you see yourself lonely. Very hard. It is almost unbearable. So when you feel someone's pain, the Lord will make sure you share his glory. When are we going to live Christ? When? This is not a duty. Christianity is not a duty. It's not an obligation. I came to church that said I've done my part. No. You need to live Christ. Live him. So from tomorrow is the uh, apostles fasting. It goes for 50 days, 49, seven weeks. Uh, according to our church calendar, this coming Friday, which is the 28th of June, it's what we call the Golden Friday. It is called the Golden Friday for one reason. On this day, two of the Lord's disciples went up to the temple to pray, Simon Peter and John the Beloved. And at this golden, at this the gate, the, 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 the beautiful gate, the beautiful gate, there was this man put there begging. He was paralyzed. So as they came and walked in, Simon Peter came back to this paral paralytic man and he said, gold and silver I have not, but one thing I have and I'm giving it to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. So they've called it the Golden Friday, where Peter said, I don't have gold nor silver, but I have Jesus Christ, the ultimate and the only true gold. So I'm going to give you a treasure that never ceases. I'm going to give you a treasure that heals, not condemns. You see, the worldly gold gives you hell because everybody chases you for it to try and get it away, take it away from you. But the gold God gives, no one can take away. No one. They kill you physically, but the spirit flies like an eagle. It soars in the heavens of Christ. So this coming Friday is the Golden Friday. 10 a.m. is the Holy Mass service. 10 a.m. Um, we are putting together a spiritual day, a beautiful picnic. We haven't gone as one church family for quite some time now so we've decided to do that in August 31st of August is a Saturday we're going on a spiritual picnic uh, so please I encourage you to put your names down for this uh, beautiful spiritual day we go in the morning come back in the late afternoon spend the time and the love of Christ and everyone that is uh, with us on that day so please put your names down for this beautiful spiritual day. It is August 31st, which is a Saturday. The other thing is, all of you, my beloveds, who are sponsoring a child or a family, uh, the membership um, card is readily uh, available now for you to pick up, to collect. So after the Holy Mass service, please just go to the committee and ask for the Good Samaritan Aid Society. If you have been sponsoring a child or a family, 
that membership card is available for you to pick up. It's absolutely beautiful and it gives you that sense of uh, affiliation, a sense of uh, sort of, um, you know, being a family of this beautiful, beautiful deed. So please do collect your, um, your membership card if you are sponsoring a child or a family abroad. Please be mindful of these fraud accounts that are still asking for money and they claim to be me. Be very, very mindful of them, please. And the last thing, um, One Jesus International Conference is taking place uh, in 2025. It's going to be for five days, from Thursday the 28th of August to Monday the 1st of September 2025. This is a One Jesus International Conference. It is open for everyone who is 18 plus from Australia and abroad. Uh, five days together as one family in the Lord's name. Um, we're providing accommodation for those who are coming from interstate or from overseas especially. We, uh, we're providing meals, travel to all venues, divine liturgy, spiritual religious lectures, contemplative prayer service, spiritual touring and retreats, educational films and seminars and so on and so on and so on. We'll be spending those five days together. I encourage you, if you're 18 plus, put your name down before it's too late because it's a limited number of people um, and it's going to be one Jesus International Conference from Thursday the 28th of August to Monday 1st of September 2025 next year. Please do enroll and um, I pray that everything goes well. God bless you. I love you very much, but don't ever lose track that Jesus Christ loves you the most. God bless.